people of YouTube, my name is JD Shadow, and we did one of these before with Dawn, with Sunrise Girl, and we got another Sailor Moon Crystal Reactor who just started with Act 26, I believe. It's Rachel Rose. How you doing, girl? Hi. I'm, Hi. I'm great. <laughs> uh, she is in the UK, so it's like 1 a.m. there. Yeah, I think, I yeah, it's probably 1 a.m. over here. <laughs> yeah, it, you see the red in your eyes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> right. So, let's first start off with who are you and how did you get wanting to do reactions? Um, I've, it's not so much reactions. I've been wanting to do my YouTube channel for like about two, three years now. Um, I've always had a passion for filmmaking as well as like other things, but Sailor Moon has been as one of the biggest things that influenced me, and I'm friends with a lot of people who react to Sailor Moon, so I thought because I think I think it was Omar he wanted me to react to the final uh, final one for. Crystal, uh, he wanted to know what my reaction was, so I was like, okay, I'm going to react because he wants to see it. I wonder if anybody else will want to see it. So I just filmed it, put it up, and yeah, <laughs> that's how, that's how it went yeah, about. That's how yeah, it happens. Yeah, I keep telling <laughs> people that I did not was not planning to do reactions. I was going to do reviews, and then all of a sudden, I just had the yeah, actor. My yeah, yeah, yeah. My channel is not going to be like all. Sailor Moon, I have parts of stuff that I want to do with it, but because I'm starting out, I'm just gonna do bits of Sailor Moon, do stuff, other stuff that I like as well, and just see how it goes, really. <laughs> yeah, what, uh, what, do you have any other reaction, like, I'm sorry, not reaction, do you have any other animes besides Sailor Moon that you enjoy watching? Um... No game no life. I I like you. Ah, uh, uh, what about like any other cartoons or any shows or, you? Um, I can name a ton. Um, ones you I'll, like? Um, I really like Steven Universe right now. Uh, I've I've been I've been hearing about that. Yeah, yeah Omar's been reacting to it. Everybody keeps saying it's really good, and I think maybe I should watch it, but at the same time, I've been doing a whole lot of Log Horizon, so right now it's kind of like I wanted to get done with one thing before I start another. But yeah, I've been hearing a lot about that. What is it What is it like for anybody who has not watched it like I have? Well, it's literally, it's about um, four people called the Crystal Gems. They all have gems uh, which give them this special weapon that they summon and they go on adventures and find all these gems. And I've only, I'm only like 20 episodes in and it's just starting to get like more serious because it starts mm -hmm. out really silly and it's really like silly humor. Yeah, when um, I, uh, when I was watching Omar's live stream last night oh uh, not last uh, yeah I think it was last night he was talking about cookie cats it's definitely yeah that's like... that's the first episode yeah oh, it's a nice it's his it's Steven's favorite ice cream <laughs> and he sings a song about this ice cream and he thinks he he's power is summoned by ice cream and it's just ridiculously funny it's just it's quite it's kind of like stupid humor mm-hmm it's just that's what it is throughout it, but it's it's really funny. I really like that. I really um, I like stuff that's similar to that as well. I've like I like Adventure Time, as well. Mm. I like also on Cartoon Hangovers channel. I like um, Being Puppy Cat, which is kind of magical girly. Um, and I also like Rivers Warriors as well on that channel. So that's kind of cartoonish. I also like a Disney one that's came out recently as well called Star vs. the Forces of Evil, which is um, about a princess from Mooney 
and it's got lots of Sailor Moon references in it, and it's got um, Card Keeper, Card Keeper Sucra in it as well. That that kind of like references in that as well, which is so really like good. kind of a satirish form, or or is it more it's, like influence? It's, it's like influences. It's like an actual like Americanized cartoon with anime, like stylings basically it's really it's really good yeah we've been seeing a lot of those lately in yeah like uh aeon flux side that this first thing i don't know why that came to my mind at first but yeah we've been seeing a lot of that recently where anime care where anime influences americanized cartoons and they either parody it or they like just take the style lift the style up and then just put it into their own ways i think powerpuff girls might be doing something like that in yeah, upcoming it's definitely right yeah uh and it seems as though you like a whole lot of like magical girl like either disney princesses or like magical girl anime yeah definitely so. <laughs> mm-hmm. have you watched malika magica by any chance yes oh um, what did you I've think of it. what I've did you think of it the full series and and also rebellion as well mm Okay. okay, sorry sorry about that, guys. We had a little bit of an uh, issue there. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, we were talking about Monica Magical Rebellion. And yeah. for those people who did not see it, spoiler alert, I'll put that up there. So about the ending to, I'm excuse me, Rebellion. The Rebellion. What happened with Homura? What would you uh. feel about that? Like... Yeah, I she, don't know. I still can't wrap my head around it, and I've watched it like three times. Cause like, the difference between Rebellion and the actual show is like that's like more, like, you you tend to ask more questions about Rebellion than you do about the actual series. Mm-hmm. And so, what happened with um, Homer doesn't really surprise me. She was only trying to protect. Um, Monica, um, uh, Madoka. So it, it, it really doesn't. Well, it doesn't really surprise me because she was trying. Like everything that Homura has done is for, like Madoka. So it really doesn't surprise me to be fair. Yeah, but in the meantime, she's trying to help one person. Now she ends up screwing yeah, she's that like up herself. Head. Everything yeah. she's doing is she's like she's hurting herself, but she doesn't care because it's for her, basically. Mm-hmm. Kind of a selfish act, but at the same time, yeah. not really. Yeah. Like she's kinda, you can understand it. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like she's like trying to be like a big sister, kind of, or like a best friend, kind of scenario. Yeah. All right. Spoiler over. Okay, so. All in all, with the with the actual series of Monica, it's kind of Monica the cats here. Mm. What, what do you you feel about like non spoilerly? What do you what do you think about the series as a whole? There, the series as a whole mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. It, like it's so different compared to other like magical girl animes. It's so dark, but it always leaves you wanting more. And that's the best thing about it because you watch episode one and you're like, okay, this can maybe actually get really good. Then you watch two. Like, I literally watched the full Madoka in like one day. Like, in a few hours, I just binge watched it. Wow. And I was just hooked. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I was yeah, that, a little surprised. Yeah, I was a little surprised about like episode one, episode two. Like, okay, it's like just normal anime girl, magical girl like, anime. Yeah, like, I love the fact that they made it different compared to other magical girl animes, because all the other ones are, like, pink and all, like, all girly girly, and this one's just kind of like, oh, this happens, and then this happens, and not, like, nobody's safe, basically. Mm-hmm. And I love that. Over. Yeah, it's like anything can really happen. Like yeah. your favorite character can die within an instant, and yeah, something bad could happen to him at any instant. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, and I, I think in a way, the way you describe Steven Universe, I think it might be in the same way, it which is. it kind of it is. It's been um, one of the influences for Steven Universe as Madoka Magica, especially for the 
Jam. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Just, <laughs> Careful just about that. The camera has a mind of its own. Oh, no. <laughs> um, the thing about Demon Universe is that it is Madoka Magica um, is kind of influenced because the crystal gems represent basically Madoka Magica in the series. And um, yeah, so you've got like Garnet, who's got one in her, you've got two in her hands. You've got Amethyst, who's got one in her chest, and you've got one with pearl, and she's got one in her forehead, and one with Steven, who's got one in his belly. Wow. So they're all, yeah. So like, it's like the same. It's the same with Doka as well. Like they all have a, a gem somewhere when they transform and. It's like Steven Universe is really good because it's got so many influences from other things as well. Because you there's loads of video game references and and anime references and just game references. references. Yeah. Yeah, that that's where uh, outside of of uh, anime, video games has been one of my favorite pastimes. I always like playing games. Like, what what kind of video games do you do you think it t- took from? Um, well, I've only watched up to like. 20 and the only one that like of that has actually grabbed me is there was one episode where he's playing like this kind of golf game but it's like but it's like all um pokemon like <laughs> really weird it's like really pokemon like and i was just like okay that's pokemon i, I, I can tell that's pokemon <laughs> some kind of pokemon digimon monster rancher stuff like that yeah yeah yeah, I've yeah, I've been a gamer like all my life as well. I've been so that kind of would appeal to me as well if if that had some influences. What kind of games do you like? Do you are you a gamer? Um, I used to be I like a very big gamer. I'm I'm not as much now because I don't really have a console to play on. Mm. <laughs> it really annoys me. But I like the one game this year that I've been really wanting is um the last Batman game, Arkham Knight. Oh, and I that's. I can't play it, and it's really annoying. Mm. I played all the rest of them, and I can't play as well. I've, I've wanted to try to play like the other Arkham games, but I don't want to spoil myself because I haven't finished Arkham City yet. Ah. Uh. With and you bringing that Batman reminds me that you were. I'm a really said, big Batman fan. Oh yes. <laughs> Which universe of Batman is your favorite? Ah, uh, this is a good question, actually. It's. Mm, I'd probably say the animated series because yes! that's where it all started for me. Mm. <laughs> that's where it all started for me. Mm-hmm. I watched that when I was a kid, and just ever since then, I love it so much. Have you watched any of the uh, movies? I've watched um, A Soul on Arkham, one with mm. Suicide Squad. Uh, any of the live action ones, the one live action ones, yeah, pretty much watched. Yeah, Heath Ledger, Whatever. Joker. Yeah, you, I'm really about... excited for Suicide Squad next year. Oh yeah, I've heard a lot about those, but uh, about it, but I haven't really read up on too much about it. I know Harley Quinn is yeah. in it. Yeah, yes. she's my favorite character in the whole of Batman. <laughs> uh, I was I was hoping you would say DC animated universe version of Batman because Kevin Conroy yeah, Conroy that is my favorite, and Mark definitely. Hamill oh I yeah, love I love, I love him as a Joker he's brilliant Mark Hamill holy shit yeah, and he's he's coming back um again he's in an animated s- movie for um the killing joke for Joker and oh my god it's so oh, I thought he was retiring I thought he was gonna no, he, came, he came back just for this movie and just shows you how much he loves that character, uh, I suppose. He he is the Joker. I cannot picture anybody other than Mark Hamill with that voice being the Joker. And yeah, definitely. likewise for Kevin Conroy as Batman. I'm so glad they got their voices for the uh, Arkham series for the video games. Is holy shit. If they had anybody yeah. else for Batman? I don't think it, it would be the same. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't really wouldn't. Do you? Uh, have you have you read any of the comic books by any chance? I mean, I personally haven't, but I've only watched. Personally, them. I'm I've, I like I try, but I've not read as much. I mostly like I mostly just watch like the like the 
like the animated stuff, the movies, and then also read up on it when I can as well on the internet as well. Mm. The character, like if you ask me pretty much anything about Batman or any character within that universe, probably the person that you're going to talk to me the most about is like Harley Quinn because you could probably ask me anything about Harley Quinn and I could probably just tell you in an instant. Mm. Have you uh, by chance watched the Batman Beyond Return of the Joker? No, I haven't actually. I've been meaning to watch that. It has Harley Quinn in it. Actually, yeah, and the, that's there, right. I'm not I'm not going to spoil it for you because you haven't seen it. Because, but there is a creepy scene that involves her in it. What ha- what ends up happening? Something about uh, the past. Yes, you need to watch it. It's a terrific movie. And if you ever watch Batman Beyond, you'll probably it, it. I don't know if it's something you have to watch the entire series of Batman Beyond to understand it, yeah. or like the first episode, couple of episodes of Batman Beyond to understand how. The main character actually gets uh, the the bat suit and all that, but mm. then you and how the world is in comparison to how Gotham City was back in the back before. Like it's like thirty, I think it's like thirty years set thirty years after the events of Batman. All right, okay, it, yeah. But if you ever get a chance to watch that movie, please do. Uh, yeah, well, I definitely will. Yeah, and it, it does not let up by any stretch. It's it's as dark as you might expect. Yeah. Set in the That's future. one of the things I love about Batman. It's just really dark at times, and it just grips me. Mm, any any other DC uh, characters you like? Was that yeah, it? Um, Harley is one that stands out the most to me. Mm-hmm. So that was. Much. Just her. Uh, I like maybe Superman because Batman's that new Batman no. versus Superman's coming out. <laughs> like I, okay, this might seem really weird, but I just I can't stand Superman at all. Oh, no! I can't. Oh, shots fired. <laughs> what do you think about Ben Affleck being the new Batman? And uh, or the, yeah, don't get me wrong. I, w- I watched the trailer. It, it does look good, especially with Wonder Woman in it as well, which I'm quite happy about. Mm, Wonder Woman. <laughs> See, I thought, okay, female superheroes, females, it's Wonder Woman. Why hasn't anybody made a movie out of Wonder Woman yet? I know, yeah. The thing that makes me quite happy about all these, like, like Marvel and DC making movies, including female characters, is, like, growing up, personally for me, you didn't really have, you didn't really know any female characters like superhero wise it was always superman batman spider-man that kind of nonsense but like i feel like in the next couple of years with girls growing up and stuff as well you, you they'll probably get to know like black widow and like wonder woman and harley and poison ivy and all these all these characters and be like all oh, right okay you know it, it it makes it more diverse whereas growing up like a few years back, it's like, oh, it's just guys. It makes it more yeah. diverse, you know. What I mean? I think with Marvel, like uh, if you don't take out like, uh, can't think of her name now. Uh, Black Widow, as you said, Elektra. Mm. All the other f- female superheroes are in Marvel, sort of like the yeah, like a female uh, equivalent of their male counterparts. Like you have Spider Woman, you have Sup- uh not Supergirl. Yeah, you have you have you have, um, you have Spider Gwen. Spider Which Gwen. was, yeah, Spider Gwen, and yeah, you. I know what you mean. Like the and Marvel have been trying to make, pretty much, duplicates of their characters, but in females. Mm-hmm. I find it quite weird. With, well, not weird. I find it more. I find it quite. How can I say, like bland about how they could just make a brand new character rather than just going, oh, they go make. A version of Spider-Man into a woman. Oh, make mm-hmm. four into a woman. You know, you could just make a completely different new character. Yeah. Or X-Men. X-Men had some females in it too. You had like yeah, Storm, Storm and Storm, awesome. Yeah. Well, and like in DC, you have some. They they created out scratch like Wonder Woman, Poison Ivy, yeah. Harley, Catwoman. Like, yeah, Batgirl is kind of like Batgirl. same thing, but she has different characteristics. Yeah. To her, to like part of a team. Hmm. Yeah. You said Catwoman, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I could. I could remember my mind. Yeah, it's quite weird. Well, within the like with the Marvel universe, it's like 
everybody loves those heroes, but when it comes to DC, everybody loves the villains from there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's how, that's how I see it. I th- and I'm not sure if I... When I played, like, Injustice, I don't know if I ever played a female villain or mm-hmm. any of the villains from there. I usually played the... I usually play Batman or Scorpion because they have Scorpion in there. I like I love uh, Mortal Kombat. Scorpion's my one of my favorite characters to play. But I don't think I've ever played as a villain in Injustice. All right, okay. Be, and I'm probably losing <laughs> you because you probably don't know what Injustice is, right? Yeah, I know where. I know okay, where yeah, <laughs> that's a pretty good story there too. Uh, what What is your favorite Marvel character? My favorite Marvel character probably. Hmm. Star Lord. Mm, I've never from Guardians heard. of the Galaxy. Oh, that's uh have you ever watched the movie yet? Yeah, I mm. that's like one of my favorite movies. What you what you think of it? It's I think it's really it's pretty much just the Avengers but in space. That, that's pretty much how how sum it. Mm. Off it's literally just Avengers in space. The only thing I really know about the movie right now it has uh Dave Bautista in it because WWE. Yeah. I'm a big WWE fan, and he's yeah. he was in he it. He plays Drax in it. That's right. Uh, but other than that, I don't know that much about it. But yeah, mm. um, Chris Pratt plays as um, Star Lord. Um, you've also got uh, Vin Diesel doing the voice of Groot, which is literally just three words over and over again. <laughs> it's quite funny. Which is probably Vin Diesel in a nutshell, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> And you've also got Bradley Cooper as a, as a talking raccoon, which is quite fun. Talking raccoon? Yeah, that's Rocket, Rocket, Rocket Raccoon. Hmm, okay, I'm going to have to go watch this. Yeah, so. it's, it's Just for the raccoon. It's, it's literally probably the funniest Marvel movie you probably, you probably see. Mm, and the um, soundtrack for it is really good as well. So yeah, we my favorite. I've it's funny as we talk about Spider Man because Spider Man's the first Marvel character I actually got into because yeah, of how human he seemed. Yeah, a lot of people got into Spider Man because he was like so normal in comparison to uh, other characters. Like every, like other like he's the one person where you get the the, uh, the character where you get like great power comes great responsibility which is yeah, a like very he's just this good ordinary role. person and one day there you go you get better it's like <laughs> oh like a lot of people do gravitate towards batman and dc too because he doesn't mm-hmm. really get any powers from any specific place he just like decides one day hey i'm gonna go fight crime and yeah, yeah and he has this find out oh, who killed my parents oh, oh, basically oh, um <laughs> speaking of, of uh batman have you ever, have you watched any of gotham Yes, I love Gotham. I've oh. watched the full season one, and I'm really looking forward to season two. Yeah, do not spoil me. I've only watched up until, like, episode four, and I've been meaning to watch, go back oh, and watch it. Oh, through the last three episodes of Gotham, I think. Last three, last four episodes of Gotham, you will be hooked. After everything everything that happens in it, you will be hooked, because it all kind of connects in a way, and it's just, oh, it's amazing. Yeah. I'm gonna have a spoiler because I'm gonna say that. Uh, well, I'm up to I think when Gordon throws Harvey Dent into not Harvey Dent. Yeah, no, 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 no. Cobblepot. No har har. Cobblepot. Cobble That's the Gordon. Oh yeah. Threw his into the water. Penguin. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I'm at. And oh right, okay. You've right, okay. You're starting to get into. Yeah, the block, and the thing right, about okay. it, the thing about it is, is that I can't get. I, it's on Amazon Instant Video, but it's not mm-hmm. on Netflix yet, which they said they were going to it put It is on Netflix. It is now. on Netflix now? Yeah. Okay. After this, I'm probably going to have to go binge watch this. <laughs> Although, out, uh, because I've been trying to binge watch on Daredevil too, but I yeah, just have had time. Yeah, I've watched like one or two episodes of that. Um, I've been meaning to watch all of it as well. It's like yeah. basically you with Gotham. I literally I need to watch the rest of that. Ah, uh, Daredevil. I think Daredevil is super good. I just haven't had time to watch it yet because all the videos I've been making. What is it? Uh, what is it like to like? Have you? What is the hardest part about making the, the video so far for you? Because mine's been like the editing. For me, cause... probably. Mm, I would say editing. 
for me. As I did, it kind of depends because my pretty much, pretty much right now, I'm, um, I'm at college. I study filmmaking. Mm-hmm. That's that's pretty much what I do full time. So I get I learn how to like, how to work with cameras properly, how to be a director, and how to edit stuff properly, and like, and all the fancy equipment and all that kind of stuff. So it's not like it's not like anything that I'm stuck at or struggle at. Mm. It's more or less the energy to do it. Ah, uh, you so it's like, like the ta- the time and the motivation yeah. to actually yeah. do something like that. Yeah, because I'll... I need to wait till it's like really quiet in this house because usually, because literally, it's the walls are so paper thin. Oh yeah, to film same anything. here. So I need to like that. That's the only problem. <laughs> oh film. yeah. And then when I have when I upload it onto my computer, I that's when I question where I edit or if I leave it or whatever. And it, usually it's the editing that kind of puts me off. So. Do you have? Uh, is as somebody who does it a lot, like probably mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. more than mo- most of us have done it. Do you? Yeah. Do you have the? Because I've seen it, and then a lot of people who like get into filmmaking or whatever their like trade is. Like I, hmm. I used to be good at writing, and I don't know. I think I'm still am to some extent, but yeah. Are you? Do you go into that? mindset where you're never truly happy with what you put out there like you you always you're like okay i'm never only enough yeah i do like the two videos i have on my channel right now i just I, like i watch them back and i'm like i could have done that there i could have done that there and i always kind of nitpick at it like mm. i could have done that there that's what i was trying to look at yeah with yeah, yeah you nitpick that. yourself and you're like oh i'm not that to the point where i'm like do i want to like keep it up or whatever I'm like no I need to keep it up I want to keep it up because mm-hmm. it's like 50-50 sometimes and then you look at it and you're like it's fine and then you just nitpick at it <laughs> yeah I was that way with my writing too I, I, like at first when I started writing it was like okay whatever I put up there it's put up there I don't really care but as mm-hmm. time went along I started to improve I started to understand how important it is to do things right then yeah. I started like okay I gotta do this and this and I'm never I look back at it, what I wrote back in the day like okay I'm tons better now than I was back in the day it's all about improvement really it's that's really what it is it's like just trying to get yourself into like the flow of doing videos and that kind of stuff and then putting content it's basically just put putting content out there and getting your name heard and that's pretty much it. <laughs> that's that's the hardest thing is to get your name yeah, out there get your name out there and you can work on so much i i like the intro that i have now uh-huh. i worked on it for like three days and that was like because i was trying to figure out where these these little elements are going to go like yeah troubleshoot all the problems and you only see like five seconds of you only see it for five seconds but it took me like three days to do yeah and, but you put a lot of effort into yeah. it and and i think the biggest like difficulty outside of like editing because like the recording is fine for me even though when I turn on the uh camera I start to like like fluster a little bit because hey it's a camera everybody's gonna see you uh huh yeah and then I go into the like and I put it out there and then to the critiques is like mm-hmm. well cause I'm scared like what are people gonna think about it is it good enough for them to view it like is there anybody that's gonna be like any trolls or anything like that that's gonna yeah. like do all stuff like that and that really like worries me like what do people YouTube, think about it YouTube is like um, YouTube is a very scary place like obviously like it really is like you could get like they're they are a very big business and mm-hmm. all they really care about is getting money for whatever but Google yeah it, yeah, it, it literally, I don't let it bother me too much because, end of the day, like, if you are making content that you're happy with and other people are happy to see it, that's all I care about. I don't really mm-hmm. care about being funded or anything like that. It's yeah. literally just about content. That's yeah, I, I was nice. trying to get, when I started doing it, I would try, like, really try to get my name out because. I'm. I was more of a gaming channel at first because, and gaming is a lot competitive because you want yeah. to get 
like exclusive deals and stuff like that you want to get your noticed by game companies the game companies will like respond to you in kind they'll like do stuff for you they'll help you out and stuff like that where like now now I'm just like okay I'm having fun doing this I like doing it the reactions now or like I like doing what I'm doing it's just something I'm doing just for mm -hmm. the kicks but I still want to get a little notice if I ever get a call from say like like from a game company like hey do you want to look at this game and whatever if you want to review this game uh, like I'll be no problem I will do that yeah. so it's one of the things where you still want to have fun you want you do this fun but if that opportunity ever comes to where yes this is a yeah. big thing that that would really boost your name out there then I'm sure anybody would take that definitely <laughs> Well, wow, that that was a that was a uh, thoughtful see, moment. Yeah, I see future right now is basically just a pastime and a hobby. Mm -hmm. Like that's how I see it, and I'm not like trying to do it to get a job out of it yeah. or to become YouTube famous or anything. <laughs> yeah, because you want to be what, PewDiePie. I know a lot of people who run about me actually, who have YouTube channels and use it just because they want to be famous and make money mm -hmm. from it. And it's like... That's the wrong way to go, yeah. It's like, if that's the attitude you're going to have towards your channel, people are going to see right through it and they're oh, not yeah. going to subscribe to you. Whereas if you're being sincere and putting content out there that you want to put out there, people are going to go, okay, she likes Sailor Moon, or she likes um, Matoka Magica, or Alice in Wonderland, or no game no life or harley yeah. quinn oh i'm going to subscribe to her because that reason you know mm -hmm. and and that's the wrong uh mindset too to get like because you're not you're not like into it you're it's taking you longer and longer to get it out there and stuff like that yeah definitely it's, it, yeah Whereas, like, I'm no, I mean it's it is time consuming the editing is the most time consuming part but it's so worth it at the end because you get I meet a whole bunch of nice people and mm. I'm having a good bit of time, fun doing it and at the same time I mean if you have fun the fame is going to come it's going yeah. to come to you when was a bill in the day and it, sometimes it's just you just have to like work through it and stuff like that and yeah, you just have to have definitely. the passion the fun doing it because people tend to forget that people on YouTube are actually real life people. They're not like, mm -hmm. you know, like if you see them on the screen and they think, oh my god, they're famous. Oh, no. But really, they're just ordinary people like me and you. Know? Like, they're not, they, they, they don't think that they're this kind of big and mighty person, you know? They just mm -hmm. think, oh, I'm a normal person, but can I get recognized? You know? Yeah, it's, it's hard to get recognized, especially with all the names that are out there right now. Like yeah. you have, like you have like PewDiePie, you have Markiplier, you have Total Biscuit, a pretty lot much, of this. Pretty much on YouTube, like the three biggest places for YouTubers are US, the UK, and Japan. I didn't think Japan would be the. Uh, yeah. Wow. Like that's the newest because that's pretty much the places where they have YouTube like spaces. They have one. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, the tech. Yeah, they have one in New York, one in Los Angeles, and they've got one in Tokyo and one in London. Mm, I see. I didn't. I didn't think about that. I. I would. I would. I would understand the U.S. and U.K. because they're the two like biggest mm. territories. But I didn't think Japan would be it. I. I, I mean, yeah. no knocking at Japan, but wow. <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah, they're the three biggest, and that's the, even though I've got two videos up now, that's the three highest demographics on the channel I have for right now. It's the UK, US, and Japan. Uh, mm. some, I think one of them were, was like in Mexico, but I'm not quite sure. Was, but like, Mexico's watching me? What? Uh, now, what, what kind of person, like, what would you like say to anybody who was like, like, hey, 
filmmaking seems like something to me. I want to get into it. What would be the first steps you would at, tell somebody what to do and if they wanted to get into it? Get and get into like get filmmaking. Into, like get into what you're uh, filmmaking. Literally, um, I started the same last year with filmmaking. Well, I've always had a passion for it since I was like. I'm 18, so I had a passion for filmmaking when I was like 12, and that's a pretty young age to start like getting into filmmaking and stuff. But I started it last year, um, this time last year actually, and pretty much it's something that anyone could do, that anyone could start off when you get into it. But you don't tend to like when I I thought it was just oh you have a camera and you write a script and you should that that's what I thought it was but there's so much more to it than just that you need to like plan what you want to do you need to script it you need to do all these like sheets for like fires and pro hazards and all this kind of stuff then also having a actors and equipment and, a and lights and stuff as well it is quite time consuming yeah you, and yeah. I made about there was like one class where we had to actually all go in like within two groups and we had to make a short film just on top of our heads every Friday morning and it was some Fridays it was torture because none of us could think of anything to do <laughs> because it was Friday morning nine o'clock like what <laughs> what are we to do and some of, them, some of them we did were actually quite funny and quite low budget and they were really good. <laughs> but to anyone who wants to start filmmaking, I would just say just go for it. Like, honestly, it's like the most fun that I've had. Like, I'm one of those people who went through, okay, I went through high school and I was terrible at every subject except from mm. English which is good, which is good because I'm good at writing, I'm, I'm very creative with writing, everything else I was terrible at and I didn't really have good grades, whatever, and I came to, I'm, now that I'm in college, I passed everything, which was a first for me and I was really, really happy with that and yeah, it's, it's just, it was a great experience and with the great people that's what made it more satisfying for me because I'm one of these people that are quite shy and really yeah, so am I yeah. when I meet when I meet new people I'm quite like timid and like no but once you get to know me I'm like the loudest person around <laughs> yeah that's say with me uh, when I we we were talking before we started filming this that I'm it's very hard for me to break the ice but once you do that I can never shut up you yeah. like Will you Definitely. please, Jenny, will you please shut up? Yeah, yeah like, it was funny because one time, like, when we first, when I was in the course, the first time we were in a studio, it was so nerve-wracking for everybody because we are like, we're actually on a studio. Like, um, this is really nerve-wracking. And our lecturer was just like, okay, I'm going to tell you all these rules that you need to do and uh, you just need to I'm going to pick people to do them. So then he's like, Rachel, you're doing um, floor manager because you never, ever stop talking. And, <laughs> just lo and everyone just looked at me and went, yeah. <laughs> I was like, thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, throw you under a bus. Let's put her there because she never shuts up. <laughs> yeah. Holy. Uh, that Was that, in, what, did that sound insulting to you in a way? Or no, it, it wasn't. No. It was just, I found it, I found it I pretty was, funny. Because, like, yeah. I, from my per perspective, I'm just like, I'm not that loud. I would just like, ha, you never shut up. <laughs> <laughs> now we're like, like, I like you, but F you. <laughs> uh, F you for saying that, but. Rachel, I love you and everything, but shut up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what? We have uh, all these, all this talk, we haven't. We haven't really talked about Sailor Moon because you are Sailor Moon. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for okay, that. so here we uh, go. <laughs> yes. So yes. what? So what did you think about Sailor Moon Crystal? Crystal. Okay, I loved Crystal. The only thing that bothered me, I think, bothered everyone, 
was the, the inconsistent like animation throughout the whole of Crystal. Oh my lord, yes. I, yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, some episodes when people were saying, oh yeah, it's so bad, I didn't even notice it. And then other episodes when people didn't notice that I noticed it and I'm like okay it was getting better near the end it was getting better near the end so I'm really hoping that when, if we infinity and we'll probably do have infinity because it said see you soon in the last one that the animation is so much better yeah opinion. they have to work on that but I hear what you're saying is that everybody just nitpicks them on every little thing and they yeah. expect for all of us to because they share that they have that opinion we better be sharing that same opinion I was like oh Christ we use please just first of all not everybody has the same opinion the second of all you're making Matt now on Molehill about a lot of this stuff about this animation like in the third yeah. episode there's the shadow Usagi's mm -hmm. hair the, the pigtails were missing and people made a big deal out of it and I never noticed it mm. like why are you a lot of people making... made a big deal of mostly out of like faces and backgrounds mm. and stuff and people were actually getting so detailed that there was like some scenes where like they were far away and they were like yeah look at the, look at the animation in this it's so terrible and like but it's a background scene it's not meant to be like fully drawn in the background yeah it's like the the further back that that like L, like detail is the less detailed you're gonna it's gonna be to the it's naked eye happen. yes yeah it's supposed to be like that because you're not supposed to really be telling the further away it is. Yeah, definitely. But other than that, like, I liked Crystal. Personally, I haven't read the manga. That's the only Sailor Moon thing that I haven't done yet. I haven't read the manga. Me neither. So having, having Sailor Moon Crystal and having them tell that story was really good for me. Even though I know that there was a few changes throughout it, I know about that, but... It was, I thought the story was really good. I just, there was a part of me that kind of missed the filler, just because the other Senshi didn't get that much airtime. Yeah. And throughout, and I found that more, and the second one there, the um, Black Moon, uh, like, the Senshi never had any airtime, excluding the episode that they get kidnapped. And, and I thought it was quite upsetting, the, that last episode there, where the sentry basically just gets told, nope, you can't do anything. You just stick. Yeah, they're like, you basically, you basically you're, just, you're worthless, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. It's like, yep, you're worthless. Just stay here till Silman comes back with Mini Moon. Mm -hmm. There you go. And then they just... And the thing that annoys me as well with them, they make the other sentry quite... I don't know how to explain this. They make the other sentry feel quite weak compared to Sailor Moon. That's oh, yeah. the problem. I have that. I hate that. It, in a way, they, they did the same thing in the classic anime, where, because Sailor Moon was always the one who did the final blow to the monster of the day. He always yeah. the one that did, yeah. did the final attack that yeah. killed, like, the Yuma or, like, the droids or whatever. Here, it was, like, even more so. Like, at least they yeah, got to be I've... something in the original. It's like, especially in this arc, when the century were saved and stuff ever since then all these seem to be used for is either oh yeah we'll save you or we just got taken down by something or it's literally just ah sailor moon ah, sailor moon <laughs> literally in sync like why yeah and at least in the dark kingdom mark they gotta do they had some role other yeah, than just had... standing back let let Yosagi do all the work and they just sit back and just lounge around. Mm hmm Definitely. Like, that that was a thing that kind of annoyed me in the Black Moon arc. It was just whenever they were around, all they were used for for being in sync. Like, if something happened to Sailor Moon, it was just, <gasps> Yosagi! <gasps> Sailor Moon! <gasps> oh my goodness! <laughs> you know, it's like... Uh, <laughs> like, oh... Uh, you know, you have powers, too. Do you can... something! Yeah. And, yeah, and... Pluto, though, got good air time. She actually got yeah. to do something. I'm like, yeah. thank God. Because in, in the original think, art, she didn't do anything. Yeah, I think with Crystal, it made me appreciate Pluto more. Yeah. It, like, in the original, I didn't really, like, with the outers, I didn't really bother as much with them. 
compared mm-hmm. to thinners, but I thought that because they gave they gave um, Plo some more ear time, especially when she was by herself as well, it kind of I I just kind of grew to love Plo because of her personality and the way she was with Chibiusa. Mm-hmm. I did. Did you? Were you sad when she died? Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I, I think I really wanted to like I have like I regret not doing like the full of crystal reactions because that episode got me so much. I think I probably cried more than Peachy. That says a lot. Oh my god. Oh yeah, she might be jealous about that. Holy She she didn't cry at all, I think, because she already knew it was coming. Yeah, she, she I think she cried to the uh when Chibi Moon said Hey, look! I transformed, and she's, yeah, there's nothing. Yeah, there. but I, no like, reaction. It was when she was like, "Oh yeah, uh, what was it?" When she, when she actually did like die, and then you had like Solomon going, "Oh, Blue, wake up!" Whatever, and then you have all these flashbacks, and it, it was it was Chibius's scream or Black Lady scream that got me. I literally was like, "Oh God." Here come the tears. <laughs> yeah. So I, I always like kind of regret it to not being able to like show like sad emotion because I usually don't cry doing any television show mm-hmm. and I, I it's, it's something that's not in my wired within me. Uh, I'm just, I'm more I, of a sarcastic nature, like snark yeah. nature when I do like reacting and stuff like that. But I think it's episode Act Twenty Six when uh, Usagi and and Chibi Yusa were hugging and they had to see each other one more time before she went off. Uh, That's, I, yeah. like, oh, I almost, like, hold it together, hold it together. No, I was, like, I was opposite. Like, I was just, like, oh, this is kind of cute moment. I kind of loved it. Both of them were just kind of, like, y- why are you crying? No, you're crying. <laughs> you're, like, okay. That's, like, a typical, like, brother-sister moment, but even though they're, like, mother and daughter, but... It was gonna. It would be something that I would do with my brother alone. Like, mm. and I just kind of laughed at it and was like, "Yeah, that's just so true." So what you think about the Dark Kingdom arc? Because there was a lot. Of, that was what got a lot of criticism, actually. When the Black Moon arc got, was like really, like, positively received, but Dark Kingdom arc got a little. Yeah, I could understand. I could understand that. I suppose because they changed quite a bit in that. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, they didn't kill off the uh, uh, the Shiteno. Yeah, Shiteno all right away. They kept yeah. them. They kept them because of the kind of love interest thing, and throughout that, that kept me going because I thought, oh yeah, they would be. It'd be good if we had a different ending. For mm-hmm. once, that the Shintano would be with the Senshi. Yeah. But, yeah, and I liked that kind of scenario. The thing that kind of got people mad, I think, was the, um, the episode with Queen Beryl appearing, and there was a sword. And oh, so they, yeah, I want, yeah, holy. A lot of people got really angry about that because it was meant to be Venus that killed. Um, yes, the girl Beryl, yeah. The killed Beryl. <laughs> The what maybe ang what those there's a f- there was quite a few things about episode twelve that like holy shit what what are you thinking guys yeah I, and the more one thing that I was really hoping they would do is what what pretty guardian sailor moon did and what yeah. the another story did was that they there was some sort of thing where you, at least you had some sympathy toward her or maybe she turns on materia or something like that and there was some chances yeah. of that happening but not only did they not do that. And not only did they change it, I really didn't mind about the sword thing, who did the sword. But... Yeah, and it only didn't bore me. Yeah. It didn't... Why did they not elaborate more on her story? We got, like, what, ten seconds of her backstory? And then that was it. And I'm like, Yeah, she's like, why? oh yeah, I've been watching you for a very long time. Yeah. And then she was jealous that Sailor Moon had, um, Indian. Mm-hmm. And... That was pretty much it. She was just jealous that she couldn't have someone. Yeah. I would have liked it if they kind of went a little bit more into that, but oh well. Yeah, I, I, think, I was. I'm I think sorry. the pro. Sorry, it's okay. Um, I think the problem with that, like, the Dark Kingdom got such a bad 
going to review is because some of the episodes, including the one that we're talking about, were like one half was quite slow and the other half mm-hmm. was really fast pace. And I yeah, think that was the problem. Because people were saying, okay, that was kind of dragging. And then the last part would just be like really fast and that'd be over. Or it'd be like the first part would be really fast. Then something would, it would get to attention and then they would drag it out and then it'd be like, oh, next episode, two weeks time. Or three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> first, first and third Saturday every month. Like, it's just dragging on. It did kind of drag on the way because by the end of the uh, Act 26, like, I'm so sad it's over, but at the same time... You're yeah, missing I, it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm missing it, but at the same time, like, okay, I'm glad there's a break and I don't have really have to do that much. Because as much as I love the one Sailor Moon Crystal reactions, uh, it just... Uh, it's good. Because it's, it, good, it's good to have a Saturday where you don't need to record. It's like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. Even though I, I only have... Like, I will say I have done other reactions to Sailor Moon Crystal. I just... Mm-hmm the iffy about uploading them because there's so many missing so I was just like I'll do the 26 I'll put it up mm-hmm. that's it because I did a reaction to the episode that we're talking about with I think I think it's that episode the one with uh, Sailor Moon trying to talk um, uh, and Damien like uh, because he was evil and stuff mm-hmm. and she thought sacrificing herself would be the the best answer basically yeah that was the one i reacted to and that was the one that kind of got me the most i was like should i upload this but i was so scared of reactions so like i'll leave it because yeah i was so scared of uh i'm sorry to interrupt you i was so scared of like uh showing my face basically because at that point i i had done that yet yeah it's the same for me as well because there was a lot of people round about me but I know from places and stuff, they don't kind of understand YouTube. Like, they just Mm -hmm. go on there and like, oh, why is she uploaded a video? Like, that's so stupid, so silly, or whatever. And you're like, I don't really want to be judged by these people, but at the same time, you're like, I don't really, why should I care about your opinion? Yeah. (laughs) It's my content. If you don't like that, then that's fine. That's your opinion. That's it. So... Well, oh, ah, oh. Phone. oh. <laughs> you're the one that threw your phone. Wow. Paris, yeah, Periscope, we got ah. your beep beat now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Sit still. Yeah. Ah, no, but it is. It's like my camera is like broke at the moment, so I have to use uh, my phone. And it okay, really I'm, annoying. Using, I'm using two cameras out right now one for when I upload this to YouTube, OBS I wanted to talk to Skype because for some reason it's weird having to configure configure things to, for the for a layout. But in episode, I think it was episode 7, I think it was, when Beryl was talking about material, like, okay, I don't like her. Alright, yeah, okay, I got you now. I was like, okay. yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, but like, definitely. is it is it worth worth uh, keeping like alive? Like, she wants to take over the world. Mer- Materia wants to destroy things, and I thought that would like, why did you not expand on that? Because there is that feud, and then Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon. I haven't watched the whole thing. I know it will be a bits and pieces. And that, uh, I'll put a spoiler here as well. That Barrel. See, uh, like she brainwashes and in- Midian and all that, but then Materia yeah. tries to kill Midian, and Beryl takes exception to this, and she goes after Materia. And I thought that would yeah. be awesome to like show that in uh, Silver and Crystal, and unfortunately, they never they never did. They that. Never didn't do it at all. No. No. And I think, sorry, another thing sorry. I think got people so much was the part where you thought that. The Shitano were like, they were fine. Oh, yay, we can be together. And then all of a sudden, dead. Yeah. That annoyed me. Cause yeah, I like, couldn't hand wave. Fo- yeah, like, I couldn't focus for the rest of that episode. Like, seriously, that's how they die. That's kind of pretty lame. That's called <laughs> being cheap. I know. Cheap kill. And it, that was the only thing, that was the only time PG actually stopped the episode. Like, really? 
Yeah. You want me? A lot of people were like, uh... And I think, I think that's... I'm sorry. Yeah. So it's okay. I was saying as well, like, you're saying, like, cinnamon crystal is pretty cheap. The thing that annoys me about it is they run... Toei run the Pretty Cure um, franchise as well. And the newest Pretty Cure, um, Go Princess Pretty Cure, their animation is, like, beautiful and it's... Like, there's no faults in it whatsoever, and people were... I actually watched a YouTube video for Pretty Gar- uh, for Princess Precure, and people were saying, why is Salem and Crystal not like this? Like, the animation is beautiful, and it's amazing, and all that kind of stuff. It's the same kind of thing, but, like, people were like, oh, why is it not like that? But I think, to be fair, like, everybody's throwing their money towards Salem and Crystal to back it, but they're not putting that much effort into it, and that was another thing that kind of annoyed me. Yeah, maybe it's because they didn't, maybe they didn't have enough staff or anything like that. Because maybe they were doing other things as well, and so they just, and they said the Blu-ray, uh, the Blu-ray releases are going to correct a lot of those like animation errors. Yeah. Like they're, I think maybe they just like okay, they're making the, they're changing the mm-hmm. stuff as it go along, and then they have they don't have enough time or not enough manpower to do that. Yeah, definitely. And that that can happen too because I've seen that when like a, like a video game when it's rushed out there to meet a deadline, it's n- it, there's like a lot of bugs, a lot of glitches, and they have to patch it in. But if they take their time and develop it right, you get a beautiful game. You get something that takes advantage of everything that they have, or yeah. what what a, like a console has. And I think it kind of showed here, and. I think right now, it, well, you talk about uh, Precure. Ha- have you heard about the Dragon Ball Z Super or whatever? Yeah, I've heard yeah. about it. Not not a lot, but I've heard about it. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I mean, I would watch it if it wasn't for the fact that just about everybody in the world who I come across who talks about anime talks about DBZ. I'm like, will you freaking yeah. shut up? <laughs> At the same time, like, that is pretty much one of the biggest animes in the world. I mean, I think growing up over here in the UK especially, the two biggest animes over here were Dragon Ball Z and Sailor Moon wasn't as big over here. It was Mm -hmm. pretty much, there was one channel that showed it in the morning and they did this for like 25 episodes and then that was it. They didn't, they only aired it for about three about six months and it was just taken off the air like that I mean, that was I mean thank god Cartoon <laughs> Network got to because then we actually got to see a whole lot more of it and like what it, like it's as good as people were saying it is yeah and like sorry um <sighs> like growing up as well because like how I watched that when I was like probably around six seven years old I, didn't, I wasn't really paying attention to it but um, when I properly got into Cinnamon, which was when I was like 14, my best friend, uh, one of my best friends was just like, oh, I'm watching an anime. And I'm like, oh, oh link, link it to me. I mean, oh, I'm going to watch it as well. And it was Sailor Moon. And I was like, oh, I remember this. So then as soon as like nostalgia hit me, I had to watch all of it. And that's pretty much what got me hooked again. So. Mm. What do you think about the, uh, if you watched in Viz Dub yet? Any, any chance? Yeah, I've watched I've watched it right up to um just the beginning of Black Men for the Viz Media dub. Mm, because really... there's no official release over here, so it literally need to wait till it goes online on some uh, dub website. On on Hulu to be able to see it. No, um there's I don't um, know if you have Hulu over there. No, we don't have Hulu uh, over here. No. This is the thing, like Fizz Media is basically just keeping it for American fans only. So yeah. people over here need to wait till someone uploads it onto like an anime website, uh-huh. and then I watch it there and then. So, so I would love the... to support it for official release, but there's nothing here for UK mm. fans to support it. So yeah, they there is a couple people when like who have been trying to push for them to do something in, in Canada and they haven't done it yet, and they were kind of upset about that. Yeah, oh, really? like I would love to collect the Blu-rays, but I can't because mm. they're not releasing over here. They there's no import option. 
I think you can get them on Amazon over mm -hmm. here, and they're but they're insanely expensive. Yeah, because they have to do international. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's what do you think about the uh, voices they have for it? Because I I love um I love Usagi's voice. Stephanie Shea. Yeah, I love her voice for. I love her work in uh, Haruhi Suzumiya. That's another anime I really like. I love her as uh, Mikuru. She was <laughs> she was my favorite character in that as well. So her, I didn't know it was her. It was playing Usagi until I like I actually saw. It. I was like, oh really? I didn't, I didn't know that. But I think they got Usagi's voice like on point. I think they did it with everybody. I have no voice that the only voice, the well, main character voice that I have trouble with is Luna's. I can't really get used to Luna's voice. Mm -hmm. Because that was... Used to yeah. the, uh, the British accent. <laughs> I, that was the one thing about the deep voice, because I, did, I personally did not mind the deep dog, but I don't yeah, mind it here. anyone to aware. But out of all the uh, voices, that was the one that like kind of fit toward you, for Luna. It's the like English accent and stuff in that. I don't know. I I mean, in hearing the new like like really young voice, really like excited voice, like teen tweenage voice, mm -hmm. like wait, what? 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 Why? Like Luna is a very old cat, so I thought like the British voice kind of helped because you could tell that she was this very old wise cat, whereas in the new job you're like, she seems like quite a new a rookie really I suppose to everything and it's like mm, our voice like because I've watched about well, I'm at like episode 50 or something now I'm used to the voices it was like at first my first impressions her voice was kind of like mm, don't know if I like that mm, see if it sticks or whatever mm -hmm. but then I mean, you grew the liking them actually more you get. I think mostly I was really used to Liam O'Brien's voice, and I mm. I knew I knew of him. He did uh, Cal Callus in Final Fantasy Thirteen Two, uh -huh. and I was so used to that. I was like, "Who is Liam O'Brien?" And I watched like I like wait a minute, this guy sounds familiar. Then I looked at like, "Oh my god, that's Callus." And that's Callus, and he was an awesome villain in that game. I mean, thirteen two was like was ten times better than Final Fantasy thirteen in every single way. But I grew to liking him. I don't agree with everything he says on a political front, but as far as him being the great voice actor, he is exceptionally good at Netflight. Mm -hmm. And I like I can like Netflight was Callus to me at that point. I was watching it. He had exactly the voice I wanted. And I'm so glad they got Veronica Taylor, who was, I think, a Ash Ketchum on Pokemon. I, he, she yeah. was April O'Neil in the 2003 version of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as well, which is kind of, kind of interesting. No, wait a minute, I don't know if. Okay, now I'm doubting whether or not that was. <laughs> now I'm thinking yeah. it was, might have been something, someone else. It might have been. I'll have to check. Okay. Because, yeah. <laughs> but somebody, someone I can't remember. I think it's Rachel Willis actually did they will know. But anyway, I yeah. and uh, <laughs> and they had Sandy Fox do Chibi Yusa, which uh, yeah, seen, I love her voice. Have you seen yeah. her on Twitter? She's a sweet person on Twitter. No, I haven't. Well, I don't think I follow her on Twitter. I follow mm -hmm. everybody else, so I need I need to follow her. <laughs> yeah, they they have. I mean, she is a sweetheart on Twitter. I don't ever seen her post anything like really bad or anything like that like she's mm -hmm. like kind to everybody and okay so who is I can't remember oh the new new ones the uh the S there is I can't remember the, the actual names that are going to be in there but I know Saturn is going to be voiced by the same person who voiced uh Monica in the dub for Monica Magica oh I've not actually heard about this so the first time I heard about it. Yeah, oh, I definitely I can recall off the top of my head off the look at it, but I'll I'll right. give you a link to it if okay. if, when, if and when yeah, I find Saturn's it. Yeah, Saturn's my favorite of the ever century, so I, I'm actually quite happy with that. <laughs> yeah, and that would fit too because of Monica being 
voice like a like a kid, like actual kid. Yeah. Uh-huh. And in the in the dub, I don't know if you ever saw the Monica dub. Yeah. On Netflix. I did. Yeah, definitely for Rebellion. Mm-hmm. But and but that would fit. But it would be kind of deeper because I kind of probably think uh I want to say Hamra now. Uh, Otaru's voice, voice would be a little deeper than Monica's was. So yeah. I don't know if... Uh, and there was, there's a few others that I recognize as being a, like, kind of... They did a lot of good roles in them. So, but... I'm... That made me really excited to see what they do with this s dub. Uh-huh. Uh, can't wait. I can't mm. wait to see us. Uh, Can't wait to see stars to be dubbed mm, because that never ever did get dubbed. We so. never actually got to see it in North America at all, like on the official release, dub or sub. Ah. Uh. They stopped at Super S and they actually stopped in the middle of Queen N- Nahalia's story and like they finished what they did on Super S and Stars and unfortunately for us here in the States, no official one you you got to pirate it, which... Arr! Yeah, I don't agree with pirating stuff. Mm, yeah. Personally. Uh, I mean, unless you want to want to delve down to that legal underground, you can't find it. Sorry, America. <laughs> yeah. But you can't have it. I think... Think... The only thing that bothers me with the Viz dub, which, because I'm in, I've just started Blue, um, Black Moon... Is their pronunciation of uh, Chibusa? They say it differently in a way. I think it was, uh, it's the, it was it Chibusa. That's that's how they say it. And I'm like, mm, no, I'm not used to mm, hearing yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah um, that was that was my only problem. But as a critique, that's pretty much what it is. But <laughs> I I really do love the Viz dub. I'm really happy that it's got dub that it really does deserve, and it's not. Cheesy and corny mm. and whatever, like the the old dub was. Yeah, I I didn't mind Deke doing it because at least they, I felt like they, kind of had an idea of what they were trying to do with it. But once they went to Club Away, holy shit! I mean, yeah. I mean, I Glenda Ballantyne is a great person, but I couldn't really, I couldn't really get used to it. Yeah, used to her definitely. A soggy voice. Yeah. Uh, what was what was your favorite episode of of uh, Crystal actually? Favorite Crystal? Oh wow! Oh, need to think here. Probably either the um, for Dark Kingdom. My favorite was the one where Usagi had sacrificed herself. Mm-hmm. I like I like that one because of how the suspense and the drama played out, but I think with Dark uh, from Black Men, sorry, um, my it's quite hard because there was a couple in Dark Men the that I really liked. I think it was the appearance of Black Lady because she's my favorite Slimin villain. Ooh. So I was I was yeah when they actually saw her face and. Yeah, I, I was think that was my favorite. Mm. I think my favorite out of the Dark Kingdom mark is probably 13 because of all the action that happened. They were going after Materia, and mm. they did a lot of great things. I was thinking that was going to be the season finale, and I didn't expect 14 to really continue on with that to be mm-hmm. the end of it, so I, that surprised me. And then as far as the, the Black Moon arc, I'm going to be biased because... Anybody who knows me knows I love Pluto. So, 19 <laughs> when is when... she appeared. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say that as well, because my reaction to that... Because I recorded a reaction to that as well, and I literally freaked out. I remember sitting at my computer, and then you saw Pluto in the death, uh, death screen, and I'm like, Oh, Pluto! I knew I knew I was gonna scream out. And I usually don't because the microphone is gonna distort my voice beyond belief. But it was like, yes, wow, white moon, yes. I just started screaming. I was just like, Pluto, oh my god, and covering my mouth. I'm just like, oh my god, feels yeah. real. <laughs> yeah, you were always like, 
like squealing like the nostalgia critic going, Yeah, Star Wars, yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Now, I usually didn't do that because when I started yelling out, it was like, "Oh God, it sounds like a chipmunk." <laughs> but okay. Oh God! I I mean on the on the uh, telephone I get called a ma'am a lot because I sound I don't have the most masculine voice in the world, so whatever. <laughs> but yeah, time time warp Sailor Pluto. I'm thinking about getting one of those figure figures. They are coming out with the uh I have two of them. Well, I have um Sailor Moon and Sailor Mars. Ooh, Sailor Mars. Yeah. How do you <laughs> like the how they uh treated Sailor Mars in Crystal cuz it was a lot different. Yeah. You didn't get to see her a lot and um with when they started it out um with Dark Kingdom um, they didn't the problems with like the animation usually was with Ray and that really did annoy that, me that that was that was the main thing yeah yeah it was always Ray it was never like anyone else I mean except from Ami which was like the second episode with her eyes and stuff but throughout the whole of that one it was always as if they like did it on purpose with Ray and it really did annoy me at one point what was the uh what was your take on Ray's character in Crystal as opposed to Ray in the original anime where like she was a her. lot more bitchy I, li I like her character in Crystal it kind of suit I, like I love the the old one for especially like her being very short fused and mm -hmm. hot headed basically but I love her crystal personality as well. Mm -hmm. If you had to pick one, would you pick the crystal version or the original? Oh. <laughs> no, Don't we're putting you me. on the spot here. Don't do this to me. Um. <laughs> and you can't mulligan either. Oh. <laughs> That's quite hard, actually. I'd probably say 90s just because it might cause, like, if they did put her 90s personality into crystal... It would be more entertaining to, between, yeah. like, especially with um, the silly rivalry over Isagi and Ray, mm -hmm. like just them arguing all the time over so silly things. Like I think, like I think it would be quite funny. Yeah, to see that the, in the, just the little arguments they have from time to time. Not like okay, she's a complete bitch to her. It's like when yeah. it ends up being, oh, the deep dub really screwed that up. I'm like yeah. I hated the uh, one where Ray Ray was given the moonstick to guard, and he screwed that up. Uh huh. So I'm like, I took it because she stupidly left it. Like, no, uh, Serena, uh, Serena, like, <laughs> actually that was that. Oh, like, why do you do that to a good character? Why? Yeah, I was actually that was very much her the, the most said thing by Zilla Mars in that dub like ah oh, Serena like why? <laughs> uh, I don't I don't mind the names either, but oh Christ, why do you do that to characters like that? Why why English dub? Why do you do that to they us? It took so much out of it. I bet that mm -hmm. was because I think that was because it was in a certain slot, mm -hmm. and that's why we took a lot out of it. I think I maybe it's because I said this on uh, Amber's LGBT uh, project, which I wish you oh, would, right, yeah. yeah, where I thought the reason why they took the homosexual relationships out is because it was it was made at that point in time where we were still intolerant to stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. And and that's why they they took out because they knew they were gonna get a lot of people angry. Like, why did you put that in there? We we do traditional values in this in this Especially country. Especially when it's kids watching it, and they're like, yeah. oh, "Why are we two kissing?" Like, yeah. Nowadays, and, you want yeah. to teach tolerance about that, yeah. And I, honestly, like in the last couple of like years, we have kind of improved with um like gay, the gay community as well and there's a lot of you, you see a lot of it now and it's it's good that it's kind of tolerated 
now. So, like, when Chris, if when we get um, Suleiman and Vinny, and we have that relationship yes. between them, I can't wait for that because I know that they will portray it in a really good way. Yeah, they will do it because that's the that's the one of the main couples that I heard about. Like, you know what? Got me a little bit more tolerant to it. Thank you very much for it because I was not I was like tolerant to a lot of things at that point in time, but. Like, that really pushed me right over to, because yeah. I knew, okay, this is something that's going to teach a lot of people that it is normal. Yeah, and you definitely. shouldn't fear it. You should understand a little bit better. Do some research just before you go and condemn anything. Yeah. I was thinking as well, because their um, Viz Media are also dubbing Slim and Crystal, do you ever think that there could be a possibility of it actually being aired on, like, American TV? They, uh... I well the thing about it is was there was a rumor that I reported on and I should probably just show you my special report on on that when I I should link you to the video that there was a rumor going around and that was never confirmed that they had exclusive rights uh, Hulu got exclusive rights to air the Crystal dub that was never confirmed and thank God it wasn't because I hate these exclusivity deals that go on all over the place uh. but. If it would ever, I would love for it to be aired on a particular on a network on the on TV at some point, maybe Cartoon Network, Tsunami, maybe. Yeah, but, that's what I was thinking. Like mm -hmm. the same because they do like Attack on Titan and stuff with that as well. I, yeah. We don't really have it over here anymore, so. It's gonna yeah, I think they've done uh, Attack on Titan, Killer Kill, One Piece, uh, yeah. DBZ Kai, can't remember Gurren Logan. Yeah. I think it'd, be, I said. it'd be great to have. A magical girl anime in that slot as well, especially Sailor Moon, because people could say, "Okay, Sailor Moon Crystal is this like a new version of Sailor Moon?" and tune into it, and then it gives mm -hmm. it gives it more publicity as well. And there's a lot of people. I do talk to someone who is a Sailor Moon fan. I talk to someone who is a Sailor Moon fan who yeah. is waiting for a for the dub because they want they are not inclined to reading and watching. Yeah. Sometimes they just want to watch it, and they I think that's kind of understandable. It. Maybe. Maybe they're waiting for. Maybe that's why we haven't heard anything. Yeah, well, it's, because it's we're waiting quite, to see what the response to the dub is going to be. Yeah, it's quite. Um, this is the thing with it, like the anime community, especially. It's like you are, you have those people who love the dub and don't really want to watch sub because it's reading basically, and mm -hmm. they're not used to the Japanese kind of accents and stuff. And then you get people who watch. Um, like subbed but don't like dubbed and then you get the people that are like yeah I, I like both I'm one of those people I like I like both mm -hmm. depending on the anime and the voice actors that they pick yeah I, that's the one of the only things that uh, I really am kind of in trouble in a little bit of like conflicting opinions about with Lock Horizon because not only do you have the watch subtitles because there's a lot going on on the screen because it's basically like Sword Art Online which is the world becomes like an MMO yeah. basically and there's a lot of stuff going on on like with the different panels that show you like the hit points and the uh, attacks and the different skills that these characters have and you're trying to watch that while they're explaining all this stuff and if you don't know what, it, what goes on in MMO if you don't know the terminology, then you're probably going to get a little bit lost. Not completely, but you're going to get a little bit lost if you haven't played an MMO before. I mean, all you have to do is, like, at some point just look at, back at what's going on, on on the screen and you probably get it. It's not that difficult to understand it, but if you're trying to look at everything that goes on at the same time, it might lose you a little bit, so I think maybe dub would help in that sort of way. Yeah, I think there's something... definitely animes that deserve to have a dub mm -hmm. especially and yeah like one of my favorite animes um no game in the life they just dropped an um a dub version of that and it's one of those animes that kind of give a wee bit that are kind of fan servicey and kind of stuff what, what um, anime was this um no game in the life um if I ever heard about that one, I'm gonna have to look at that. Yeah, that I've like I've been into that for like the last couple of months now. I'm I'm really I love that anime. 
it's like 12 episodes long and mm. it, that's way I, mostly I love, though, yeah i love the sub it's really really good but when i got into when i watched the dub i like the main uh, guy's voice zora i love his voice then one of the main girls who stephanie loved her voice and then there was shiro who's literally like this 11 year old girl and I don't really like her voice in the dub, <laughs> and that's just uh, he's my favorite that's... character as well in the in that series. And I didn't really like her voice because it seemed like she was older rather mm -hmm. than younger. Yeah, I think that's why some people are against dubs because they really don't want their favorite character being like butchered or yeah. butchered to the point where he is really unwatchable. But I do yeah. think any more that if a dub does something wrong you're really uh then people are going to know about it right away and is you're not going to survive very well and i think there's a lot of different companies now like viz media or funimation maybe not necessarily funimation because i don't know if they do that great of a job as opposed to some other people but i do <laughs> know there's a lot of good dubbers that will good like official dubbers that will actually take great care in the source material so I think dubbing would be better off now than it was like back in the 90s when you yeah yeah like what you just said there about fun uh, fun animation mm -hmm. um, there is an anime that I've just watched recently that came out this year called Oriwa no Seth which is about vampires and stuff Ooh. and it is it is really good I couldn't I was like in that mood where I couldn't be bothered watching the sub, so mm. I watched the dub, and the dub is really, really good for it. And it's literally, basically, just the plot is there's this boy, basically, the vampires take over Tokyo, basically, and all the adults are basically killed. All the children are still alive because I, I can't remember the reason why the children are alive, but there, there's some sort of reason behind it. And there's this boy who's an orphan, and he meets some another. He was an orphanage, and meets other. Um, he meets his best friend there, and he has a family there, which basically were all orphans, and they were kidnapped by these vampires, uh, along with other children, and mm. they try to escape this like vampire world, and. It basically just takes off there, like Ooh. just this big plot twist happens. <laughs> this is something ones. I may need to look into because yeah, yeah vampires is one it's of very, the things I like. The best way to describe it is, it's sort of like Attack on Titan, but with vampires. Mm. See, uh, that's one of the things I, I want. I you can have to link me to where that is because I want uh, this is something I'm going to have to watch for myself. You just gave yeah. me a, you just gave me a suggestion for a reaction series so yeah. There you go. What about <laughs> that is 12 episodes long and it's a sub and a dub for it as well. See I, I've I was always trying to like should I do a dub or a sub because I was trying to do was thinking do, should I just do the dub for Monica Magica but then comes the whole thing with okay copyright situations because we've been getting hit recently i mean it yeah, was like something that. really yeah really big like i got three strikes and i had three strikes at one point in time my account yeah that's but, right and um uh amber yeah like saved your channel basically yeah 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 it wasn't for her that's i would right. probably would still wouldn't be here right now so thanks to her for that but and yeah. peachy obviously got hit as well uh yeah you but, had to re-upload all her reactions Oh yeah, because that that was awful, uh, yeah. and they, those were some of the most uh, watched uh, videos on my channel and her channel, all her channels. Yeah, I mean, definitely. many of them get to like two K views. I mean, I don't know why I'm not, but whatever. But anyway, uh, I I but I mean, we are always with YouTubers. We are always like that could be taken away from us just like that. So we gotta be kind of careful. But at the same time, mm -hmm. it's like. We're not trying to take away from anybody. We're just trying to review your content, and yeah. that, I mean that's something that I really clamor on. Like, at what point does fair use come into play in that sort of scenario? Yeah, like 
it's the same with it's like exactly what I said earlier like YouTube really don't care as long as they yeah. make money and the thing is YouTube should be a very creative outlet for everybody so like for example with like song copyright or even with reaction series for some reaction channels doesn't matter if it's anime or if it's cartoon or an actual like live action TV show or whatever mm -hmm. it's like you should be able to do it in your way without being copyrighted for it because mm -hmm. literally all you're doing is giving it more publicity so that more people will watch it so in a way they've got to thank you for that because you're basically saying oh I really like this people watching you be like oh I really want to watch that because my favourite YouTuber is reacting to it and therefore they're getting more people to watch their show oh yeah I, I, that's how I've, I see it <laughs> I've uh one of the thing, one of the main things I'm getting is that I'm telling people, "Hey, have you seen Log Horizon yet?" And people are like, "Oh, I've heard about it, but I haven't really watched it yet. I've heard about it." I was like, "Yes, because not many people know about it. I'm doing a reaction series to it, and there's like 50 episodes. I'm thinking, bring it on, bring it on. I'm yeah. ready for this long series. It's gonna keep me occupied for a long time." And but that's. I mean, that's showing, like, okay, we are giving notoriety to things like Monica, to Log Horizon, to Steven Universe, to Salem and Crystal. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's good like that as well, because people who, like, like yourself, have done, like, Sailor Moon, and then from that point on, you're like, what do I react to next? Because that's not going anymore. What do I do? And it's good to go for another anime that has a lot of episodes, because it keeps you going for a while. Mm -hmm. as well. That's why I liked Omar's idea of doing Steven Universe because it has 52 episodes in the first season and then the second season has 20 I think and they're releasing more episodes for season 2 in September. So mm. it keeps him going. Yeah so, and he, he yeah. was saying that uh, on Log Horizon uh, saying that he wasn't going to do one that had a whole lot of episodes and that's surprising to me that Steven Universe has maybe he picked up on the second season I'm not sure or maybe in the first season I don't know yeah because the thing with that was people were really enjoying Steven Universe because of the humor and it, it was quite it was quite silly humor and then also you had references to other stuff and it kind of drive people then to watch it then also you've got silly songs and all kind of stuff in it as well and it's like really really silly at first you get to know the characters and then it progresses and you get to know everybody's personality in it and then it starts to get serious and I think I already know that about, I think it's like three, the last three episodes in something really big and serious happens and there's like a big reveal thing which I already know about and it actually annoys me so much that I already know about it yeah so, I haven't Yeah, but, that would be a spoiler for me but I haven't not seen it it's a weird name it's like Wow, what <laughs> what would ever want you to name a show Steven Universe? Like, why do these two na these two words don't come together? Like, really. The, the good thing, really often. Like, the thing I like about it is that the Adventure Time, um, the Adventure Time, uh, being Puppy Cat and Bravest Warriors all tie in together because it's the same people. The main Adventure Time and other people from like who created like the work for Adventure Time have went okay I'm pitching this idea here's Bean Puppy yet okay, I'm pitching this idea here's Brave as Warriors I'm pitching this idea Steven Universe and all three of them are actually really good ideas and they all focus on different things so what most of my uh no, nobody's really pitched uh actually an idea until you did with that one uh vampire anime you can have to Yeah. See me the name. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll. name. Yeah. But uh, most of mine, uh, everybody probably knows that one of my inspirations for me getting to his Total Biscuit because he does a lot of like, like uh, con uh, news content, games, and stuff like that. And he's got like, too many view too many subscribers. I can never touch that. But I watch uh, the co op show podcast a lot. And one of the sponsors of that is Crunchyroll and whenever Crunchyroll sponsors them they start talking about animes they watch and they watch they say to watch stuff like Kill a Kill Food Wars that's what they, I need to watch <laughs> yeah Kill a Kill 
Yeah, Killer Kill. 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 My friend, one of my best friends, has recommended that to me to watch, and I mm-hmm. still need to watch it. So. Yeah, it's not just fan service. It, there's a lot of great <laughs> stuff in there that you get. Yeah, he's still it, and uh, a uh, Log Horizon and recently World Traeger. All right, okay. Which is which I would I haven't known much about like World Traeger, but it is by Toy Anime. It is the one. It's the only anime company that has used that bot system. So I'm scared okay. of trying that. I'm scared of trying it. Oh, because <laughs> I don't like Trigger did Kill a Kill and HKFs did Log Horizon and I'm not quite sure who does who did Monica. But it wasn't any big company that did Madoka. I think it was I can't I know what it is but I can't for the life of me pronounce it and it starts with an E and it's Antiplex or something like that. And and, and I think Anaplex did the dub. I think. Yeah, no, 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 no. But no, no. Oh, the yeah. thing is, I've only watched the dub, so I don't really know about the sub as much. Mm-hmm. So, but, but yeah, I mean, no, no other anime company has done that to us. And uh, Toy has been the only one that has actually went after. And I think maybe they don't understand what what it is that they're getting, or maybe just don't care. They're just doing a full on sweep. So. Yeah, but I'm scared. I'm that's why I'm scared to do World Trigger. But it does seem like I mean, if if it's getting a per if they're interest if a person who's never interested in anime is watching these shows, there's something to them. So I'm yeah, like, you know what? Definitely. If Total Biscuit's watching them, I should wa- I should at least look at it because yeah, at least it's try something it. because it's got to be interesting enough for somebody who's not into anime to actually watch it, and that's really cool. They have people who would otherwise not be interested in anime to try out something that might get them into the genre. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, I hate to bring it to you, but it's like, I, I, we've been talking for about, like, at least when you came back, about, like, an hour and a half. Alright, okay. So, and, I have to end this at some point. So, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. And, as with every Shadowcast that I do, I give you the chance because you were so kind to us and I it's kind of me and I would love to do another one with you actually. Because mm-hmm. at some point in time, do one. it'd be really <laughs> cool because you're a kind person. You ha- you do a very good... You, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm lost for words with this. I mean, yeah, it's like the first time that I've actually kind of came all out with myself. Because I've not even done that on my own channel yet. Literally, people just look at my channel and be like, oh, she likes the you, women. Whereas you have. here, I've basically just said my opinion and basically everything. Yeah. So. I think I think I'm think i really better. I, I think sometimes the fact that you're talking to someone else that sometimes it like maybe helps you out a little bit. It helps me mm-hmm. out as well. When I'm talking to people like Amber, when I did the Anxiety Shadowcast with, yeah. a lot of, with those people, which there's a good... I got a few more planned out. They... They sometimes talking with other people, having like a collab, something is a good way to get yourself known, and also a good way to break the ice. And hey, I think you have a great knack for it. I really hope I yeah. we get to see a lot more from you. Thank you. <laughs> and um, if you want to go ahead, and because you took a good bit of time to help me out and and help out with the shadow kids, will you go ahead and uh, plug your channel? You want okay. to? Okay. Um. I'm Rachel Rose. I'm a UK-based YouTuber from Glasgow in Scotland, and I'm pretty much really new to world of YouTube. <laughs> I've been wanting to do it for like ages, and I've now just got the courage to do it now. And I'm planning on doing a lot with my channel in the next couple of months. I've been planning on doing more collab videos and more. Sailor Moon kind of content, and also I'm planning on doing some cosplay videos soon as well. Whoa, cosplay! What what of? Um, I have many cosplays that I want to do, but what's the I first one you want to do? What's the first one? Um, the first one that I want to do is I want to is like okay, there's like there's like a mix of two that I want to do. Um, 
there's one from the enemy that I've suggested to you. Um, it's a vampire called Cruel mm. that I want to do. And the other one is... Uh, I'm going to think of my ass because there's so many. Um, I think it was I think it was Jupiter I wanted to do. Well, a Jupiter vampire. No, um, Jupiter, still Jupiter, or uh, Krill from. Oh, Lord you're not gonna mix them together or anything like that. Yeah, yeah oh, that would I, be I, awesome. I have I have one cosplay idea that I want to mix together, but I'm gonna keep that under wraps till I actually. Ooh, you're gonna out keep us in suspense. I love it, like it. Oh, okay, <laughs> and and. Watch out in theater someday. She's going to have a feature film at some point in time, and you're going to want to watch it. Oh, okay. <sighs> and everybody should know who I am. Well, you're <laughs> on this channel. Log Horizon. Yeah. I've done uh, Life is Strange. Witcher 3 is coming. All that is fun stuff. Uh, yes. And yes, Life is Strange is coming because I've been busy doing other stuff. Log Horizon. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> thank you very much, Rachel. Welcome. You've been a great <laughs> guest. Thank you. And maybe we'll have more people when you come back. I would like to... Maybe. Ho yeah, hopefully, be because great. I think I think you deserve a whole good round of applause with that. Thank, thank you. you very, thank <laughs> you very much. Uh, my name is Welcome. JD. Yeah. And all... Oh, by the way, our Twitter names are down underneath. So if you want to follow us on Twitter, there you go. Rachel, It's Rachel Rose underscore J the JD yeah, Shadow. Right. I mean... My name is Shady Shadow. That just happened. Mm -hmm.